client engagement, right? Uh, put in the comments section if you uh, call your customers on a regular basis. Yes, call, no call, right? And that's uh, uh, important because uh, you want to make sure that you engage on a regular basis, right? I'm a big believer of calling two customers every week and introducing yourself. Say, I'm the CEO, right? I want to call you and thank you for your business. Afternoon, everyone. My name is Richard Moore, and welcome to the March episode of the Ask DME Live Show. If you're new to the show, then the whole aim of this show is to answer questions about modern business growth. So anything you want to know. So make sure you keep sending the questions in. I know after the last show, we asked people to send questions in, and we've had them slowly over the months since the last show. So send them in to us at support at Digital Media Edge. .co.uk or DM me on LinkedIn. I've had questions sent to me through DMs on LinkedIn, or you can comment on the LinkedIn post as well. So the event or the post, comment on there with your questions, anything about business growth that you want to know to help grow your business. So developing a growth strategy, attracting the right type of traffic to your website, lead generation, lead nurturing, sales, customer acquisition, using technology and systems at the heart of your business growth. Anything you need to know about this, just ask. And metrics for measuring it. Make sure you ask plenty of questions about growth metrics because these are the important things that you should be measuring on a daily basis. What we'll do is we'll then compile them and try and pull in as many as we can in each of the live shows. Obviously, on top of the questions and answer shows, we're going to be inviting guests on. And that's what we've done for you this week, a really special guest that we've been trying to get on the show for the, quite a while when we first thought about having the show. And we've managed to get him on today. So over the next 45 minutes, he's going to give you plenty to think about. I know that just from having known Dan for a while. So let's introduce HubSpot's very own Dan Tyre. Wait a second, I don't get that uh, cool lead-in music. I like da 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 That was awesome. And super excited to be here, Richard. Uh, thank you very much for all the preparation and uh, super excited to speak to the uh, business uh, owners and uh, sales and marketing folks of Lincolnshire. Perfect. So just give a quick recap. I know trying to keep you to a couple of minutes to talk about your history, Dan, is going to be hard for us. But give us a quick recap on Dan Tyre and your backstory. All right. See what he did. See what Richard just did there. He's like, OK, Tyre, we just want like the three minute version, not the 45 minute version, which is hard in a 45 minute show. A couple of things. Uh, first of all, um, I have a 42 year background in uh, scaling businesses. Right. Uh, I started, um, I don't know, uh, in 1982, before half of your audience was born. And uh, <laughs> uh, I, um, I went to university in upstate New York. Uh, I worked my way through college as a musician and selling books door to door. I know I sound like your grandfather, but uh, that's what I did. And uh, back then you could do it. You could sell books during the summer and raise enough money so that you could go to work, uh, go to school during the uh, school year. Uh, when I graduated from college, I uh, sold computers uh, for possibly the worst run company in the history of business. This company had an exclusive to uh, sell Apple computer east of the Mississippi, and they somehow found a way to screw that up. Um, and then my boss, this is kind of funny. It's a good story. He's like, uh, I'm leaving. I, I worked there for a year. I was a top salesperson. He's like, I'm leaving. I'm like, okay. He's like, I'm going to a startup. And I'm like, Ooh, what's a startup? He's like, it's a small business. It's going to grow quick. I'm like, all right, have a good time. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm bringing you with me. I'm like, I got a job. He's like, I'll pay you 1500 more a year. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a startup guy. So for a very small amount of money, I jumped over to this uh, small company that uh, grew from three million uh, U.S. Uh, dollars uh, revenue a year to 1.4 billion. Back when a billion dollars was still money, it, uh, or like real money. It was super fun, super exciting, uh, and I got addicted to growing companies quickly. Right. And I really enjoyed it. A lot of uh, excitement, a lot of changes. Uh, it was a tremendous industry that made lots of um, uh, 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 it moved around a little bit. Uh, then I quit, started my own company, uh, just like many of your entrepreneurs. Right. Uh, I started my dining room with nothing, no customers, nothing and scaled the company to 30 million U.S., six locations, 300 uh, employees. 
right? So uh, I used the skills that I learned in a startup to understand how to scale and how to grow. My third company went bankrupt, which uh, taught me business planning and humility. It was hard, right? But I learned a ton. My fourth startup got bought out by Microsoft, which was pretty amazing. And uh, my fifth startup is a company called HubSpot. Put in the chat pane if you know HubSpot. Uh, H-U-B-S-B-O-T or H-U-B-S on the New York Stock Exchange. I'm the first salesperson for HubSpot, right? I left for, uh, I was president of a software company and started as employee number six, right? And uh, it uh, has been an unbelievable 14-year ride. Uh, still fully employed by HubSpot. Um, uh, and uh, they're kind of the leader in the inbound revolution. I've done every job at HubSpot, ran the international division. I ran sales training. I ran the leadership program. I taught all the salespeople. I uh, did recruitment for a while. I uh, ran the small business division. And uh, I'm going to say over the last five years, I've uh, been an advisor and an investor, and uh, I really like helping uh, businesses grow, especially rural businesses or um, businesses that have a very specific niche. So that's what we're going to talk about today. All right, Great. Richard, how did I do in conciseness? Right yeah, uh, yeah, you, yeah, that was just over five minutes. That for you was amazing. Okay. Dan, thank you. So you're giving me a three out of ten. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, okay. yeah. We're, we're, it's good, I know. Uh, concise. Um, and the one thing I asked you to talk about was your Muhammad Ali story. Oh, yeah. I did, okay. I did enjoy that when I met you in Dublin. Everybody has to put in the Zoom in the chat if they know uh, Muhammad Ali, right? I don't. I think he's pretty universally known. But when you and I were growing up, Richard, everybody knew who he was. Just the most recognized man in the history of the world, I think, or at least at that time frame. Uh, anyway, he was a uh, heavyweight. Right. And uh, he was known for a variety of different things. It changes his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. He was a um, not a supporter of the Vietnamese. He uh, was a boxer. That was his profession. But he was a nonviolent person. Uh, anyway, uh, the second company that I talked about, uh, turns out I'm good at running companies. I'm not very good at uh, naming companies. So when I started, I named the company Automated Labor Incorporated. And when I say automated labor, what do you think of, Richard? Um, I don't know. Exactly. That's what everybody said. They're like, what? Is it a temp oh, firm? Is it a robotics company? What the hell is that? And uh, I got like so much grief because it was a terrible name. So the next year, I shortened it to ALI Technologies, right? And no one cared about what ALI uh, was. But I had the uh, website, www.ali.com. So... Um, in 1997, I sold the company. In 1998, I got a phone call from a guy who said, I want to buy the URL, ALI.com. I'm like, it's not for sale. He's like, no, 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 it's for a good cause. I'm like, I don't care. He's like, no, 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 it's for uh, important, like, uh, like social thing. And I'm like, what? He's like, uh, I'm the manager for Muhammad Ali. And I'm like, no way. He's like, yes. He goes, I want to buy it. I'm like, uh, ALI.com makes perfect sense. I'm like, no, I'm not going to sell it to you. I'll give it to you. And he's like, what? I'm like, I'll give you the uh, URL. He's like, why would you do that? I'm like, I'm a huge Muhammad Ali fan. There's only one thing I want. What next time he comes to Phoenix, I want to meet him. And they're like, you are the greatest guy ever. And I'm like, yeah, I got my like good points. And uh, so they sent me all this stuff. In fact, you and I were just looking at it right behind me. That's a signed picture. I've got boxing gloves. I got all these pictures, everything that, uh, right, that he sent me, like every paraphernalia that he ever had. And when he came to Phoenix, um, he spent a fair amount of time here because he had a, a location here. They, uh, I got to meet him and it was amazing. Oh my goodness. He was 60 something years old. He was, um, had Parkinson's. So he's a little bit impaired, but, um, you, you can't tell anybody couldn't tell the press, right? Sometimes he was going to, uh, like they said, we'll fax you remember fax machines, Richard. Of course you do. I know, I know, I know. I don't know if your audience remember fax machines. They were these things the size of a box that like paper used to come out of. And they'll say, we fax you in the morning if uh, Muhammad Ali will uh, will uh, make the um, arrangement or he'll make the date. And uh, he did. And he came out of the elevator going like this. I was like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. And uh, so that was my uh, one of my brush with fame. Perfect. Right. So the other thing that we have to talk about is obviously you're the author of Inbound Organization. That was a book you wrote. Ooh, I with, like that. Yeah, get that. Todd. Uh, give you a little promo. There you go. Good yeah. product placement. I like that. There yes, you yeah. go. I've got my signed copy that you did for me nicely in uh, Dublin. Um, so that was 2018 you wrote that about the growth of Inbound and how you've yeah. seen it grow, obviously, being, yeah. being involved for 11 years with HubSpot by then. Um, so the last two years has been this huge digital um, 
this digital leap, really. Do you think that's changed what you wrote in the book back then, or is the principles the same? How's things changed over the last okay. two years? So awesome. You and I talked about this in the briefing meeting. Number one, um, the reason I wrote the book is uh, everything changed in 2007. The way we ran companies like uh, in the early uh, 2000s was totally different, right? It was seat of the pants. It was, I think this is the right thing to do. It wasn't data driven because it was too expensive. Everybody had on-premise software, right? I got to explain floppy disks to your audience, right? Unless they're like over 50, they're like, what? What are you talking about, old man, right? You used to buy software, you used to load it, and then you used to pay 17% every year for maintenance of the software. That means you paid to have the company fix the problems of their software, which sounds insane today, but that's just the way we did it, right? And uh, that's the way like the first 30 years of my business career went. And then in 2007 was the advent of the SaaS revolution, right? It was the advent of InBat. And uh, Brian uh, Halligan and Dharmesh Shah, the co-founders of HubSpot, all right, two amazing people, right? Uh, the, the background in history was uh, Brian was working in uh, uh, venture capital and has given away $5 million US of um, Series A uh, money to um, uh, software companies that were scaling. And he's like, what are you going to do with the uh, with the money, with the investment? And they said, oh, we'd buy salespeople, we'd go to trade shows, we would uh, uh, do mailers. And then Darmesh was uh, in his dorm room and he was writing a uh, uh, a blog called On Startups. He was getting 40,000 people coming to his website, 40,000 a month for free, right? And Brian's like, ooh, there's a disparity there. There uh, is an opportunity for us to to jump. And so when I saw that, I was the, uh, the only out of 10 employees, employee number six, out of 10 employees, everybody else went to MIT. They were all brainiacs. They were all like nerds, right? They're all data-driven. I'm like, oh, man, this is kind of weird. I'm the only like regular guy in this entire company. Uh, but they were super smart and uh, they did things differently. And so uh, in 2018, I wrote the book because of the different ways that they ran the business. And uh, I always thought that this inbound, right, sometimes when we say inbound, some people they think call centers. Some people think uh, like inbound marketing, right? There's a variety, but I always thought it was a series of management principles to help you run your company better. It turns out after a global pandemic, when everybody moves from face to face, right? Hundreds, like uh, a certain percentage of thousands, tens of thousands, millions of companies used to go face to face, right? Not anymore, right? And we may be coming back to that, but it'll now be like a hybrid. So uh, the inbound revolution continues to move very, very quickly. Uh, like in previous generations, a company's potential was based on where they were located, right? The ability to take advantage of like the physical location or their financial resources, right? Today, access an effective use of information, it translates into a competitive advantage and uh, it accelerates the sales process, uh, which is why the inbound revolution is so important. So there's uh, a handful of like platforms of, of the inbound. And you tell me if you think it uh, resonates. Number one, you have to treat people like human beings. Where do you fall on that one, uh, Richard? You like treating people like human beings? Yeah, I think, you know, as much as we push digital, I think that human touch and that human experience is still at the heart of what we all, because we still emotionally engage with people, even if it's through of course. a different format. So. You're a great example of that. That's why you're doing this uh, show. That's why you're putting on the jacket. Wait a second, should I have a jacket on? I'm not sure if Lincolnshire is like very <laughs> formal or not. I, do you want me to you're run fine. and get my jacket? I'm probably in the middle of something right now. Uh, but you you and Rachel and everybody I know and associate with your company, always very, very human. Number two, you help not sell. And how do you feel about that one? Helping people first and selling them only if it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, we give and uh, we always say, you know, we lead with value and we give and we help people make the right decisions, whether they're a client or not to us shouldn't make any difference, really. Uh, and think, you've you always know. looked at the reason why yeah. you're insanely successful, right, is you like to help first. And I do, too. Right. Some people help to earn their business. Some people help just to help. It doesn't matter. Right. But in uh, um, April of 2020. Right. What do you want to do? Do you want a salesperson to call you and say, I want this? Or do you want somebody to say, you know, Richard, what I can really do is raise the visibility of your uh, Ask DME show. Right. What I want to do is uh, come on and um, like uh, see if I can help you get some more customers. Right. And you're like, wow, that's awful nice. And that's the way the world works. Right. Leading with kindness and help. Number three, and this is a little bit of a change, right? Um, uh, focus beats 
uh, like uh, broad based um, uh, generalists, right? Uh, in uh, 2021, the riches are in the niches. Or, or uh, in the UK, the, if you want to go to the beaches, you got to work the niches, right? And the specifics, right? Uh, you find the place where you do your best work. You find the type of customer you love to work with. You understand a little bit more about their background, their experience, their seasonality, their vocabulary. You know all about them. You know you're going to do good work. They know you're going to do work. Uh, and you can actually grow more quickly by reducing the, uh, the, the swim lane of the people that you work with. A uh, number four, customer experience. This is a big one, uh, from our, um, CEO and founder, Brian Halligan. He's like, really in 2021, uh, product development happens so quickly, right? It moves so quickly that everybody pretty much has the same features. If we don't have a feature, it's going to, we're going to have it in six months, right? We're going to try to innovate, but everybody's product is basically the same. Therefore, Right, uh, the ability to accelerate and uh, the ability to um, ensure that when you engage, you're doing it in the right fashion. Not pushing, but helping. Critically important. That customer experience is where you got to focus. Right. I don't know if you know the statistic. Do you know how many uh, competitors the average company had in 2014? No. Guess. Ten. Okay, good, good guess. Uh, you didn't win, but you got um, the average company had six, right? But right. I guess that's close enough. Today it's 44, right? 44, right? In the old days, if you didn't like working with somebody, you're like, ah, I don't work with, like working with that lady, Rachel. She's a little mean. But uh, now, right, it's just easy to go someplace else, right? And so uh, leaning into that uh, client engagement, leaning into that customer experience, critically important. But do you think that's the main differentiator now, that user experience people have when they work with no question. companies? No question. Uh, and, and we expect it, don't we? Uh, and so what does that mean? What are the implications of the, uh, that to the inbound revolution? That means you've got to respond quickly. The, the two other things, uh, you got to study the data. Uh, because, and if you don't have access to that data, you're at a competitive disadvantage. In the old days, you could call people back at the end of the week. Right now, Richard, if you don't get it back to somebody in five minutes, they're secretly pissed. They're like, Richard, I called you eight minutes ago. And you're like, okay, I, like I was on another call. I was doing a live show. They're like, I don't care. Come on. And that's driven by the technology that we have in our like uh, pocket, right? All over the world, we can get answers to any questions, anytime, anywhere, right? So that's now the baseline, the level of expectation in any business now. That's what people expect. They expect you to know them the first time you show up the website. Uh, hello, Gavin. Nice to see you as well. And uh, they expect that you're going to respond and that you're going to have all of the uh, facts right at your fingertips. So the more information that you have, the easier it is for you to outreach, the better it is for you to explain your value proposition. The way, an innovative way in which you introduce yourself, that makes all the difference in the world, right? And when you lead with a big heart, when you lead with uh, helping, not selling, it makes a huge difference. Right. And uh, people have less, uh, they have more choices. So they have less tolerance for poor service, poor customer experience, and want to make sure that uh, they're working with the kind of people who have the similar philosophies. And is that the main opportunity you see then for businesses as they're moving sort of from digital? There were a lot of businesses a year ago, probably were digital ready, then they were digital first. Now a lot are going digital only. Do you think that's the main opportunity for them, this engagement with customers and prospects and potential customers? I think that's a big one, right? When people are, um, sometimes I hear uh, people say, no, I know my, all my customers. I'm like, all right, uh, do you talk with them all the time? They're like, uh, some of them. I'm like, no, 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 you got to bear hug your customers, right? I was fun as a concept of a flywheel. Right. The people in Lincolnshire know what a flywheel is. Yeah, we've we've been educating them that you can okay, go into so, that biocentric thinking. Yeah. If they're uh, car people. Right. They know a flywheel drives the pistons to drive an internal combustion in, uh, engine. Are there a lot of potters in Lincolnshire people who do like uh, no. pottery? <laughs> Not really. Potters, so. I know. I know. That's the other flywheel. When you're a potter, you put a piece of uh, pottery on a wheel, you uh, press it. And a, a, a flywheel has two components. It has uh, the force. That means it goes around a little quicker and the uh, friction. That means it slows it down a little bit. Right. And in every sales process and every customer experience. Right. There's force and friction. 
right? And you got to make sure that it's easy to do business with you. That means no like difficult contracts. You could sign a contract, but you got to be very uh, contract uh, customer centric. You can uh, work through issues, but it has to be easy, right? Uh, in the management consulting we do with the inbound organization, right? Uh, we sit with the CEOs and we're like, uh, well, is it easy to do business with it? And they're like, yeah, it's super easy. I'm like, well, let's see. Call your um, reception desk and see if we can get through to a salesperson. And they're like, no. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, no. I'm like, why? They're like, uh, I don't think it's appropriate right now. I'm like, I think it is. And then I, you're either going to call them or I'm going to call them and sense fear through their uh, body. They're like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. Right. And uh, like a phone tree in uh, 2021, horrible. Not being able to get to a, uh, a, a somebody who comes to the website. Rachel's sitting there like monitoring who's coming to the landing page in real time. Oh my goodness, she's feeding me information of people who are on the website right now. Rachel just put in the chat pane, Dan, make the answer shorter and call Gamma Price in London for crying out loud. That's amazing. Right. But guess what? That's the technology that gives you a competitive advantage, that quick response. Then when I call, right, Rachel, I got to know, oh, Rachel, you're in Lincolnshire. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're a principal in um, the uh, uh, Richard Boyer's uh, DME uh, company. Oh, yeah, I got to know all that information, even if it's the first time I met it. If I have all that information now, Rachel's like, yeah, Tyre did his research. He knows all about If I don't, right, I'm in this other category. I'm in this other category of 43 other companies that are just like also rents. It's a much different uh, customer experience. Fabulous. Yeah, so um, I think that's uh, the data driven. I think that's all we've seen certainly accelerate in the next 12 months is how people can measure everything that's happening in their business and make decisions based on that data. Um, rather than opinions. I always say everybody has an opinion in every company, you know, around every yeah. board table, everyone has an opinion. But actually, when you're basing decisions on data, it makes it so easy to predict your growth. Okay, that no, no question. And you need to. In the old days, that's what I was uh, referring to. You could just like, I'm tr like, I want to trust my gut. I think that's the way it is. You can't do that now. Number one, the data doesn't lie. Number two, the data, if it's, uh, if it's presented in the right fashion, becomes obvious. You spend less time trying to get the data, more time reviewing the data so you know the right thing to do. And sometimes in some of these uh, rural communities, people say, I don't think this works in a smaller environment, in a smaller community. I'm like, no, 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 it does. We have uh, at the beginning, right, when I was first calling for HubSpot, people would say, like, what is inbound? And I would explain it, right? At the time, it was just inbound uh, marketing, right? Now it's inbound marketing, inbound sales, inbound service, inbound organization, a whole management philosophy. Back, back then, it was people coming to your website and uh, the uh, conversion of visitors to leads leads to customers. Uh, today, we have in this beautiful proof, right? There's uh, uh, 100,000 people who are paid customers of HubSpot, right? And uh, we can see in every single uh, industry how the uh, access to um, uh, effective information can really change the trajectory of a company, right? And you can see all the case studies. You, uh, Richard, you have tons of uh, uh, personal examples of before and after, right? And people who lean into the digital first, people lean into help. People lean into the uh, uh, reducing the friction are going to win. That's how they're going to grow. And uh, virtually everywhere I go all over the world, right, most executives want to grow, right? Do people in Lincolnshire want to grow? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think uh, especially after the last 12 months where a lot have had to, you know, uh, some have shrunk. Uh, some businesses have been under real pressure. Um, other businesses in certain industries have, have continued to grow. You know, it's it. The pandemic hasn't really stopped that growth. In fact, it's encouraged it if they're in the right areas. But there's other businesses, I think, that have taken the time over the last year to really look at their strategy and how they're going to grow when they come out of this. Um, and I think there is a real appetite for growth. You know, there's a real appetite. And the government's got to support that. They are, you know, there's money being made available, funding being made available. And it's all for business growth and employment, isn't it? So, yeah, uh, only in Italy. Italy is the only place in the world I've ever met, I've been, that they don't want to grow, right? They're like, nah, if we lose customers, no big deal. In uh, the UK, people want to make sure they have a good lifestyle. They want to make sure they have a healthy company. And uh, that's super important. All right. Uh, I'm just reading the comments here. Gemma's saying hi. So hi, Gemma. Uh, Nirajan says, uh, HubSpot agency partner here. Very, very good. Uh, Charles Emberton asks if I only breathe. 
And I'm like, uh, it's 4.30 in the morning. You didn't tell people that. I had to get up at 4.30 in the morning. I'm in Arizona in the United States, right? Yeah, and I do uh, free yeah, vacation, right. <laughs> right? But I only have 45 minutes, so I got to put all the content in in a short period of time. Anyway, the uh, inbound revolution works for all size companies, right? It's yeah. not just, that's one of the greatest thing and why it's a revolution. It works for solo entrepreneurs all the way up to Fortune 500 companies, right? Mm -hmm. And we know and have seen how it works, right? And we have that proof. Right. right. And uh, now we want you to bring it to um, DME has to uh, bring it to um, more companies because it's the only sustainable competitive advantage. Right. Uh, all the studies show this is an interesting statistic. Over 90 percent of all purchases, B2B and B2C, start with a online uh, search or a social media post. Right. So uh, that is the way people are um, interested in engaging. Right. And so if uh, people are not familiar with uh, uh, manufacturing in Lincolnshire, or construction in Lincolnshire, or farm in Lincolnshire, or somebody who sells um, some type of um, building materials, right, they're going to Google it. Right. And uh, over 14 years, I always ask entrepreneurs, well, do you want to be found when somebody Googles it? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, then you have to practice this process of inbound. And it used to be that was just getting found by your website. Now it's going to be found. You have to respond. You have to respond quickly. You have to respond professionally. You have to have lead intelligence. You have to have lead notifications. And then you have to not annoy me, right, which is hard at 430 in the morning. You've got to make sure that it's easy for me to do business. That means I don't want an email that says, can you meet on Thursday? That's the dopiest thing ever. Uh, Richard, you and I both use meeting links. The reason why we could coordinate this like uh, 8,000 miles away is because uh, you understand when I'm available, right? And you could go on my channel at any point in time. If you go to dantire.com, you can see it that uh, on uh I have a widget that shows you my available time and people just get on my uh, calendar all the time. Very, very good. So it is, uh, to answer your question, it is the, um, uh, it's still very, very relevant. I'm going to say it's essential. If you ignore inbound, if you ignore your website, if you decide you want to um, scale uh, another way, it's up to you, right? You're the entrepreneur. I never tell entrepreneurs what to do. I just tell them my story. I tell them the data and the facts, let them make their own decisions. Because uh, when it comes down to it, entrepreneurs have to make their own decisions. They have to trust their gut. They have to uh, like uh, focus on the things that they think they're going to uh, be successful. But right now we have 14 years of uh, success behind us. We have seen the implications. We understand the data. And uh, you have to like uh, factor that into the mix. Perfect. And of, of course, business growth is all about revenue growth. I mean, I think when you strip away everything, you've got to grow your revenue. So it's uh, as simple as that. And I think that most oh, okay, of Okay, so there's two parts to that. Can I yeah. comment on that or is Rachel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just leading into the sales side, where, which is where revenue is okay. generated. Yes, yes. Oh, place. you're a great interviewer, man. You have all of the questions. Yeah. See that? I, I didn't even see that coming. I'm like, okay. Uh, it used to be it's the schmarketing conversation. And say it, yeah. Richard. Say it in uh, British. Smarketing. Say it again. Smarketing. All right, that's Sales good. And marketing, we love it. Sales yeah. and marketing pushed together. I had a guy in Australia go, "Oh yeah, I know that smart marketing." I'm like, "That's not what it is. It's sales and marketing pushed together." And they're like, "Okay, that's weird." And I'm like, "Yeah, I invented that term with Mike Volpe in 2007." But in the old days, right, like uh, there were these separate silos of sales and marketing. Right, they were completely different. One was all women and uh, like they were always in the doghouse and one was uh, guys, right? There was two marketers and 40 salespeople, right? It was kind of an amazing uh, uh, like uh, leverage point, right? And, and marketing was always the doghouse. They did the brand and then they did the lead generation and sales did everything else. Today, right, the companies that work together, right, sales and marketing alignment grow more quickly, more effectively, and it's more realistic about the way they do it, right? Because the, it's not just a separate silo. That's the way the world works, right? What we see a lot is people get very, very interested, right? They'll see um, a presentation on a show or they'll see something and they'll get all excited, right? And then they'll just stop. And then you'll be like, well, why did you just stop? Uh, it's because they're like, okay, we got busy, right? We see that all the time. The reason we strongly recommend that you always call your customer, right? We call that uh, 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 client engagement, 
right? Uh, put in the comment section if you uh, call your customers on a regular basis. Yes, call, no call, right? And that's uh, uh, important because uh, you want to make sure that you engage on a regular basis, right? I'm a big believer of calling two customers every week and introducing yourself. Say, I'm the CEO, right? I want to call you and thank you for your business, right? I want to make sure that you know I appreciate your business. I want to be a partner for the next five years. You tell me what I need to do to be a better partner. This is my, uh, this is my cell phone. If for whatever reason, Right. You uh, I don't you don't think I'm doing a good job. You you text me, you call me and I'll address it within uh, within 24 hours. Right. And that client engagement, that ability, right, that ability to uh, understand and be exact about uh, how you're going to grow. Bear hug those customers makes a huge difference. Right. And then exactly what you're talking about. Net new customers. Right. You have to go out and you have to define the best way to get customers that are in your niche, that you do great work. Right. And uh, Richard, do you like word of mouth customers? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Why? Always. Why do you like word of mouth customers? Well, it's usually because we've been recommended by somebody else and someone who's worked with us, had the experience of going through the process that we take clients through. You know, it's uh, it, it just is always the best type of business, isn't it? Yeah. Doesn't so uh, that's what everybody says. Hmm. Uh, I uh, we call it wormel word of mouth leads and I'm like all right do you want more wormel and they're like what are you talking about I'm like do you want more word of mouth leads they're like of course I'm like why they like move quicker to the everything you said move quicker through the process but less price sensitive they're like no 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 Richard told me to buy this I'm gonna buy it right and just send me the contract I don't care he's already done the research I trust him right that's the social contract that we have based on the relationship that's translated into um, uh, translated into a transaction right therefore right uh, generating more word of mouth leads is essential so in uh, 2021 you have to make your best customers the centerpiece of getting more customers right that's the essence of the flywheel that's what you could teach all your customers right if they're not putting user case studies testimonials if they're not sending information if they're not calling their customers on a regular basis and say you know what is there anybody else you know that's not a direct competitor who might be a good fit for our product and services then they're missing an opportunity and it's easier to grow in a particular stovepipe being the uh digital agency for b2b companies in uh, lincolnshire right than it is to be a generalist and selling all over the world because you're a little bit focused on the same time zone the same vocabulary the same seasonality and you become now everybody says oh no no you got to go to richard and rachel right they will manage the process they understand how to help you grow they have it down they've done it uh, 30 times and it's going to be very easy for them to scale Right. That's the key of growing a business in 2020. So that's the inbound revolution. That's more prevalent than ever before. That is critically important as a uh, company scale. Perfect. And that really goes back to the heart of marketing, which is about identifying good fit people. So all your t all your efforts are spent talking to the good fit people and not the people who aren't proactively buying at the time or they're down the line. So is that really well, hold why on a second. Charles in the in the comments? Charles, Charles says, we love the concept as it validates our business approach, which is awesome. I think that's one of the things that you see in uh, more rural communities, right? It's that humanness, right? That's that's why people do business with you, Richard. You're a damn fine human being. They know that if there's crunch time, they're going to be able to uh, lean on you and your staff to get stuff done. And uh, Charles said, especially if we can find a query about the orders as it creates an opportunity, if there's a problem, they usually respond much better, a call to an email. All right. So, you know, I'm a big believer of picking up the phone and calling. Right. And uh, that's critically important, in, uh, like everywhere. Right. Uh, uh, only four to 14 percent of people answer their phone. Right. So we use video email and we use uh, the action of picking up the phone to call people to insert that humanness into the automation. And that makes a huge difference. The ability for you to uh, for people to know you, uh, for people to understand what you stand for, for uh, them to know that you value the relationship makes all the difference in the world. And is that why cold calling just doesn't work anymore then, Dan? It's not cold calling. Anybody who cold calls is uh, wasting their time, right? Actual cold calls where you take one script and you uh, call 120 people every day. Uh, it's never been uh, that productive, right? But it doesn't work today. It doesn't work for you. You don't like cold calls, do you? No. We, well, we never do them, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not only you like getting them. not to. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lose, lose, lose. Number one, they're not effective. Only 1.2% of the time do they uh, convert to a conversation, right? A real cold call. Number two, uh, the people who do it hate it. 
right? You can tell they hate it. You can hear it in their voice tone. Number three, uh, the people who receive it hate it. You're wrecking your brand, right? So there's no reason to, it's still a multi-billion dollar industry. Warm calling is different. That is, you pick up the phone, you uh, find out a little bit about Rachel, who's a delightful human being, by the way. And uh, Rachel and her two cats, Rocket and Linus. I think I got <laughs> at least one right. Anyway, uh, Rachel, uh, when, uh, Rachel knows what she wants. And she knows that uh, if I can help her, Rocket and Zenzo, that's it. Thank Zenzo. you. I know, I know. It's good to see that you know the names of her cats. I should know the names of her cats because they saw them yesterday, but I know. I forgot. Uh, the uh, process of engaging with warm calling means, number one, you're only calling certain people. Number two, you're doing the research, right? Do 10 minutes of research, right? I see that on LinkedIn all the time. When Gemma calls me on LinkedIn, she's like, Dan, you remember me? We took the Lion program together. I'm like, yeah, of course, Gemma. That's awesome. Yes, happy to talk with you. Somebody else says, Dan, uh, you came up as a suggestion to connect. I wanted to connect. I'm like, what kind is that? That's the most sterile, uh, uh, like uh, ridiculous way to engage with you. You would never say that the same thing to me at a cocktail party you would say to uh, everybody else, right? That's a non-starter for me. I'm just not going to connect. Connect, you didn't even put in five minutes of research. It only takes five minutes. Then you can say, oh, wait a second, we went to university together. Oh, wait a second, you're in Lincolnshire? The Lincolnshire Lions, oh my goodness. Or you could say something that's relevant to start the conversation in a very human way. That makes a huge difference. I think people in uh, rural communities understand that a little bit more. I think they leverage it a little bit more. I think they're more attuned to that. And that's the inbound uh, uh, organization right there. The leadership principles of being human that engage in a way in which um, you, you uh, show people that you want to earn their business. Hmm. And so how do you um, equate technology and systems with being human then? Okay, we... that's good. Uh, that's the perfect question. Oh, my goodness. You're good at this. Uh, number one, you got to make sure you have easy access to information that's easy to use. Right in the old days, you had a user manual. Explain to everybody under 30 what a user manual is, Richard. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge document that stayed on a on a shelf for. I know, for, uh, I know, there. I know. It would be like three hundred pages. You'd have multiple chapters, and you'd have to read it just to get the product working, right? You don't have a user manual anymore. If it doesn't work right, like out of the box, you're like, forget about it, right? And uh, so uh, today, your product just has to work. Right. That's the one difference in uh, 2021 that we see that's uh, super important is that uh, the ability for you to um, like ensure that the product just has to work. Your service just has, it's another reason why you niche. Right. Because if you're spread too thin working in multiple industries, that it could get really, really hard and uh, you have to manage multiple kind of things. Right. If you're in one uh, like seasonality, one information, then it's a ton easier to ensure that uh, you're moving with the rhythms of the uh, program. You're moving with the uh, uh, the seasonality and that you're attuned to uh, the natural rhythms of that particular industry. Right. Do you want to get a tissue? <laughs> you can, uh, I know, uh, crazy. I'm good. Four thirty in the morning in Arizona. Right. So, what's some of the mistakes that you see businesses doing then in the okay. certainly the last twelve months? Are there any mistakes you see people yeah. making when they're trying to grow? They know it's not. It doesn't apply to me. Right. right. They're like, no, no, no. This is not a good uh, way for us to um, to grow our business. And I'm like, okay, well, do you want to get found for people who are looking for your stuff? And they're like, yes, we do. I'm like, all right, there's only one shot. You cannot compete with a, a company that's practicing in bed. They're faster, quicker, better, right? And they have better access to information. It, the, the CRM has to be easy to use. HubSpot has the world's leading uh, CRM for scaling businesses. It has to be uh, easy for salespeople, managers, and owners to take a look at all the information. It has to practice the sales and marketing alignment so it's uh, connected together. And it has to be uh, something where you have instant access to information. And the companies that have that will be able to treat their customers better in the long term. Perfect. Okay. So we've got, uh, Rachel keeps telling me we've got five minutes left, so I better keep on track here. Stay there for 15 minutes. Come on, <laughs> Rachel. Come on. You've got to be right on the ball. So let's talk about um, some tips that you can give businesses in Lincolnshire then. What's uh, Dan Tyre's top five tips you could give businesses in Lincolnshire that want to grow? Great. Number one, uh, define your niche, right? Do your ideal customer profile and your persona. You can go out and you get the ultimate guide to ideal customer profile from HubSpot. You could go out and get uh, the make my persona. Richard will send you all of those links. He's an expert at understanding how you get a deep understanding of the emotional reasons why somebody bought. Uh, number two, you call your customers. 
right? There's a couple of people in the comment section who said, yeah, we call our customers all the time. And that is awesome. That is great. That's exciting. You'll learn a ton, right? Third, do an NPS survey. Net promoter score, it's two questions. It's easy to send and it has a lasting impact for everybody in your um, in your client base. When people say, when it, uh, owners say, I've got happy customers, or I ask them, do you have happy customers? They go, yeah. I'm like, prove it. And they're like, uh, how? I'm like, you need an NPS. I want a number. I want that data you were talking about, Richard, to ensure that uh, it, it, you're walking the walk, right? And then uh, make sure that uh, you're making the transition to uh, online effectively, right? That is for your culture, uh, for your employees, as well as your uh, um, customers, right? And that is the, the outreach and the way in which we uh, engage effectively so that um, – you are answering the questions quickly and efficiently that people need. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's fantastic. So um, we talked about always be helping earlier. I'm just going to go back to that, uh, that mentality that you, you seem to fit the inbound really is everything in the approach is about helping people rather than pushing the business on people. So is that the big difference with the flywheel and the old sales funnel we used to have the old marketing funnels we used to have? Uh, it's a good one. The funnel was uh, broken, right? Funnel was all sales oriented, right? And no one cares about salespeople today, right? A salesperson much different in 2021. A salesperson is a consultant. He's an expert. He or she is somebody who guides you through and will help you make a good decision, right? Uh, we wrote about it in a book. Sometimes a salesperson has to say, uh, no, this is not a good fit. Sometimes a salesperson asks her, and you've done that before, right? Yeah, you said yeah. you're, you're a good business, but I'm going to refer you to somebody else because we're not going to be able to do great work for you. That's hard. That's really hard, but it's the right thing to do, right? You want to make sure that all the clients you accept are the right fit clients doing the right stuff, right? And when an entrepreneur gets to that level, that's the critical uh, like uh, point of knowing that you're a complete expert for what you're uh, doing, that you're going to deliver quality work, that you're careful in... Uh, who you select as your customers, right? The old days, it was buyer beware, right? It was up to the buyer to determine if the right uh, resource was there. Today, it's seller beware, because if you pick the wrong customer, right, it's not going to turn out right, right? It's not going to be able to do your best work. They're going to uh, be uh, have problems, and you got to make sure that that doesn't happen. And that's where reviews and social media, that's where the damage can be done to reputations. Yeah. Always say, reputation management is just as important, isn't it, as everything else in this? 100%. 100%. Right. Any questions in the chat, Rach, that have come in over, over the last 40 minutes uh, for Dan? Anything that wants to be asked? Uh, no? Oh, there's... Hold on a second. Right. There's a couple of other ones that uh, you asked me in the briefing session. Uh, yeah. Common mistakes. Number one, it's salespeople don't call the leads. You got to call them, and you got to call them within five minutes. Number two, marketing people don't understand the sales process and quota. If you're a marketing person, you got to make sure that you understand the uh, like the structure of how people, the company is making money. And uh, if people aren't using the right technology, it's a hairball. Right. It's if you don't have easy access, lots of people say now nah, we have this old hope grown uh, CRM system. I'm like, how's that working for a competitive advantage? And they're like, nah, we got to change sooner or later. I'm like, how about sooner? And they're like, uh, I go, you have to change sometime. Right. You just been pushing this can down the road for like five years. Right. Why don't you just like uh, do what you know you have to do? Right. And uh, that will make it easier for everybody to do it. Oh, we right. want to talk about video and outreach as well. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, right. If you use uh, HubSpot has a, a tool, Vineyard has a tool. Loom is big in the UK. There's a variety of different uh, programs to do it. But um, that's another example of humans it, inserting in the sales process. Right. So uh, uh, put in the comments uh, uh, a pain if you like getting an email. Right. And I know even you, Richard, who's the nicest guy in the world, like another email, an email from Dan Tire, nothing. Right. There's nothing that I can do in my email that is going to get you excited unless you got a little dead tire. You got a little dead tire with my orange wall, my Mohammed Ali poster. Now you're like, ooh. And in 2017, I said it's the year of video. Everybody's going to get three a day. I was wrong. Right. 2018, I made the same clip. 2019, same thing. 2021, still not the year of video, but it's a great way to do that outreach. And I'm a, a strong believer that everybody should use that as they scale. Yeah, just for that personal human touch that it gives them. Yes. Uh, so get a flywheel, 
right? Make sure that uh, um, you're, uh, you have a good uh, uh, employee persona, right? The critical advantage in 2021, right? For any small business, right? Uh, small businesses have always known this. Scaling business, right? The key is keeping the same culture as you grow. Right. And if you have those principles of solving for the customer, focus on data, understanding and uh, engaging in a powerful, effective fashion, then it goes a long way towards uh, helping you scale to what you need to do. Yeah, I've always felt that solving one problem for one persona really well is the basis of a really good company. And then your other right. services come off that, don't they? Nice. Uh, James Carwright says, enjoying the conversation. So that's good. Boom. That's what we're going for. I know. Uh, Richard is a great interviewer, right? Uh, Rachel and Richard set this whole thing up. And uh, uh, like, this is an important decision. I always tell entrepreneurs, it's up to you, right? You get to decide. But here's the thing, right? We have all of this data. We know that it's important. And uh, we know that it works, right? If you choose to not lean into uh, online, right? Don't do digital first. You do so at your own peril. Right. Because other people are going to do it. And if, in fact, they're using automated technology. Right. Oh, by the way, lots of HubSpot uh, products started free. Right. Lots of ups. And Richard has access to all of the information. And uh, now if you really want to scale. Right. And uh, you don't have the time to figure out the free stuff. Right. You should definitely go to the paid stuff. That's why it gives you a competitive advantage. Right. But it's there. We want to help everybody. The whole idea of HubSpot right, is uh, to help you grow and scale better, right? And uh, for the businesses of Lincolnshire and for uh, you and Rachel, I'm at your service, anything I could do. Even getting up at four o'clock in the morning, I'm in. Well, well, thank you very much, Dan. That's 45 minutes on the, on the dot. So I think ah, Rachel... that's the first time I didn't go over my 20 minutes. Amazing. <laughs> Rachel that's will awesome. be cheering in the background. Yeah, and, I know. And, uh, as we said at the start, these shows are going to be once a month. Uh, the next one coming up is in April. Rach, have you got the date for the next one? Just ping it up at the bottom there. Uh, Ooh, so, you know, those yeah. captions are super cool. Who, who uh, is that Rachel and her brilliance at the bottom where she like puts up my Twitter and she has my yeah, email? Yeah. That's She's awesome. The producer, right? producer Rachel. So Wednesday, the 21st of April um, is the next one, 12 noon again. Again, I implore you, just send questions in. Anything you've got that you want to know about business growth that can help your business grow, just send them in. We've got multiple ways of getting the questions into the show. We will then sort through them. We'll invite guests on. We've got a, a list of different guests to invite on. We may even get Mr. Tyre back at some stage in the future as well, if we're lucky enough. But All thank right, you James, for everything you today. Much. Look, yeah. James Carter said 45 minutes without taking a breath, right? That's yeah. pretty good, right? I know, I know. I got to give a shout out to uh, Richard and Rachel. Thanks so much for uh, allowing me to uh, be part of your community, right? Hopefully we'll get to visit Lincolnshire sometime in the future and uh, keep helping our customers grow. Thank you very much, Dan. Thanks for your time. And I hope everyone's enjoyed this show. See you all soon. Bye.